Hey guys, Meet Rebels, Chris Tomer here with this Saturday mountain weather update, and we've got snow coming down as expected across uh, the Wasatch. This is Alta. You can still see some snow falling, and you've got some additional snow ahead. There's a second wave that's going to come in um, overnight into tomorrow morning, and I'll show you that coming up, but that's the view at Alta right now. Um, solitude, still a little bit of light snow um, coming down there. Again, you're going to get a break and then a potential second wave. Now, up here in Jackson Hole, Grand Targhee, just getting started. I've got snow, moderate to heavy, continuing into tomorrow. So what you see here is just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, over into the Sierra, man, it is just coming down heavy. Look at this at Palisades Tahoe. I mean, it's basically uh, a blizzard. You've got a light to moderate intensity atmospheric river con making a contribution to this. So there's a bit of a fire hose. Um, and, and it's great to see, uh, there are other chances of snow in my forecast, but this is by far the heaviest. So tomorrow is going to be a big powder day across a lot of Tahoe and Shasta for that matter. In fact, there's radar out of the West. So a couple of things to point out here, you can see the storm system rich in moisture hitting Tahoe all the way up to Shasta. And it's just piling that moisture up against the, uh, um, the back of the, the, the western side of the Sierra. Um, and then you look ahead of it, there's another package of moisture over Nevada, and then there's a wave um, cutting through parts of Salt Lake and also the Wasatch, and it's heading towards the Tetons. So when that hits, it's going to be even heavier up in the Tetons. But you see the break between Salt Lake and the precip over Nevada. That will all move in. So that's why I say there's going to be a break and then a second wave. Also notice uh, rain and snow up in the Pacific Northwest. Let me take you in closer to Utah, and you can see this wave of snow sliding through a lot of the Wasatch and the northern end heading up towards the Teton. Teton. So then we'll wait. We'll get this next package that moves in overnight into tomorrow. Let me give the lay of the land here on water vapor. So on this, your oranges and reds are your drier air aloft. The moisture aloft is going to be in the whites and the blues. Double barrel here. Area of low pressure. One right here. That's the one with the rich feed. There's another area of spin up in the Pacific Northwest. Both of these throwing that moisture into the interior. Um, so waves of it, the real heavy stuff is over California. And then you've got another storm system behind it. Now, both of these are going to track towards the north, northeast. So both of them will kind of take a track like that. This other area of low pressure will likely come in and do a similar maneuver and hit the west coast and then go up into the north, northeast with that type of track. Okay, guys, let me show you my timeline. Best odds of snow for the Wasatch, Tetons, Colorado, Tahoe, Interior, BC, and the Northeast. So, for example, in the Wasatch, you've got light to moderate snow accumulations rest of today and due tomorrow morning. Um, I'll take a much closer look at, uh, we'll drill down to Alta here in just a second, but, and then 1216, some light to moderate snow accumulations. Now, in Colorado, with the storm track being so far to the north, a lot of these storm systems, and like I was showing you here, a lot of them are going to miss um, most of Colorado. Not all of Colorado, but most of them will miss it with just light accumulations. The one spot, and I pointed this out yesterday, that will benefit from this is going to be the Steamboat area, Buff Pass, Cameron Pass. Um, those areas in the extreme northern mountains, I think you're going to benefit um, and be just fine. But going back to this in Colorado... Um, you've got light accumulations this afternoon, tonight, tomorrow morning, and then light on 1217. Interior BC's got quite a bit of snow ahead between today, tomorrow, light to moderate, heavy 1217, 1218, and another storm system 1222 and 1223. Okay, let's drill down. So this is Alta, the forecast uh, mediogram, and this is at about 9,000 feet. So this is the remainder of today in this column. There's Sunday the 15th. There's the 16th, and there's the 17th. So what do you notice here? Um, a little bit of leftover snow right now, maybe another inch, then a break. And then the second wave comes in early tomorrow morning, late tonight, early tomorrow morning, with potentially another one or two inches of accumulation, then a big break, and then some heavy snow comes in on the 17th with potentially six, seven, maybe eight inches of accumulation out of that one. Um, winds gusting to about 30 today. 40 to 45 tomorrow. So tomorrow's going to be windy with this second wave uh, of uh, snow coming in. And the temperatures are going to plummet to around 10, 9, 10 degrees by the afternoon tomorrow. So it's going to turn much, much colder. Uh, so that's the forecast at about 9,000 for Alta, Utah. 
um, very similar for Snowbird and, and to some degree Solitude and also um, Brighton. All right, let's go to Colorado. Here's Steamboat. So like I talked about, there is going to be some benefit. This is a time height forecast to the extreme northern mountains around Steamboat, Mount Werner, Buff Pass, probably blowing off down into Cameron Pass as well. But you can see the relative humidity forecast next 72 to 80 hours. Timelines at the bottom, you read that from right to left, and this is for a slice of all the layers in the atmosphere. You can see the green increasing um, the afternoon of today, continuing tonight, and throughout the day tomorrow. There is moisture at play. There's higher moisture in lift across the northern mountains. And then there's a little drier pocket, and then the moisture increases again by the 17th in the afternoon, probably into the 18th. Um, so that area will benefit just fine. Now, much drier, watch the difference, from Steamboat to Loveland, much drier forecast, less green on this. Um, and so here's a, here's the situation. You've got some additional moisture coming in this afternoon, tonight, tomorrow morning, but it's thin and it's fast. So it's going to be light, much lighter accumulations for Loveland versus what I'm forecasting for the northern mountains. And then there's really not a whole lot. I showed you that other batch for around the 17th, 18th. There's not a lot here. There probably will be some by the time we get into late 17 and 18. Um, okay, let me show you the forecast radar. So today we're going to use this version. And so this is going to take us out, and I'm going to do this very slowly, the forecast radar over the next roughly 84 hours, so three and a half days. So watch all the movement. This is currently where all the precip is. Here we go. So this is by the time we get to tonight, you've got a little bit of extra moisture. And there's that second wave of precip that hits the Wasatch. You can see it right there by tonight and early tomorrow morning. And then a little bit of that snow brushes western and northwest Colorado. This is late tonight into tomorrow morning. All right, now this is Sunday early. So this is at about 5 a.m. roughly on Sunday right in that time frame you've got that second wave of snow right over the top of the wasatch heavy snow through a lot of uh, the tetons heavy snow through a lot of idaho and northwest montana a lot of the snow in the sierra is over at this point and all that has moved into utah wyoming idaho and montana all right let's move through the day on sunday a lot of the snow continues in those same areas and look at it dive down into northwest Colorado and the northern mountains. You can see the snow right over northern Colorado, Steamboat, Buff Pass. So again, those areas will be just fine. Very light snow south of that for the I-70 corridor. All right, here's Sunday afternoon, Sunday night. Everything starts to settle down. Um, here's Monday morning. Most of the precip is up in the Pacific Northwest where we're going to see heavy snow accumulations. Uh, wait till you see some of the numbers I'm forecasting up there over the next eight, nine days. So here we are by the time we get to, again, this is early Monday. Um, here's midday Monday. Next storm system sliding into California with snow for Tahoe up to Shasta. This is Monday afternoon. A new batch of snow. Really good targeting here for a lot of the Tetons. I've got like two feet of total snow in my forecast over the next eight, nine days. I'll show you that coming up. But look at everything moving through Idaho and Montana. Heavy snow. Again, this is a Monday afternoon. There's Tuesday morning. Um, heavy snow over the top of the Tetons. Some snow through Montana. Snow back over parts of central to northern um, parts of California. Oregon's getting blasted. Um, here we are by the time we get to Tuesday midday. Here's Tuesday afternoon. Next shot of snow moves in uh, to a lot of the Wasatch. The high Uintas clipping parts of the Tetons and another shot of snow for the northern mountains of Colorado and there's the final the final pitch so that's uh, Tuesday afternoon okay guys let me show you my latest numbers this is the rest of today and a lot of the snow is happening in California right now um, and some of it is falling in the, in the Wasatch and parts of Idaho and parts of Wyoming but you get the idea this is all the rest of today through 1223 so almost to Christmas at this point. Uh, big numbers in the Sierra, 10 to 20 inches uh, from Mammoth up to Tahoe, um, and about three feet for Shasta. Looking up through Oregon, Washington, I mean, we're looking at one, two, maybe three feet of snow, maybe even four feet around Mount Baker. Uh, and so that area is going to get blasted. Looking at interior BC, I love the numbers, probably one to two feet of accumulation during this time frame. Like I pointed out earlier in the timeline, 
Um, Interior BC has got one, two, three solid storm systems, two to three solid storm systems. So that's how we get to these numbers. Um, and around the Wasatch, looking at potentially 10 to 14, so about a foot of accumulation there. Um, a couple of feet over the top of the Tetons from Grand Targhee to Jackson Hole, about a foot for Big Sky. Uh, anywhere from 8 to 14 across a lot of uh, Montana. In Colorado, again, you're really out of the storm track with everything going north. So very light accumulation south of I-70, two or three along I-70, potentially 6 to 10 from Cameron Pass uh, up towards Buff Pass, Steamboat, Mount Werner, and those areas. Those, those are the areas that are really going to benefit uh, by far the most. Into the northeast... So some accumulation, and, and I didn't really talk about it in the timeline, um, but the northeast, you've got rain, snow, 1217, and then light to moderate, 121819, 19, and light to moderate on 1221. So that's how I get to my numbers here. Um, but any, you know, kind of looking at 5 to 10 is probably your range for a lot of Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. Lots of sixes in Vermont, more up in Jay Peak, probably eight. Uh, 10 on Mount Washington, lots of 7s up through Cranmore, Sunday River, and Sugarloaf. A little bit less at Ragged, but that's what I'm thinking between 1214 and 1223. All right, guys, we'll end on the map for the west here. Really good snow still with potentially two or three different storm systems moving across the west. Unfortunately, with the track a little further to the north, it uh, kind of leaves a lot of Colorado out of the picture, but it's going to hit the Teton squarely. It's going to hit Idaho, Montana. Uh, squarely in the Pacific Northwest interior BC. I mean, we're talking really good numbers. Guys, thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.